What's going on people? Welcome back to Blues Fans TV and welcome to your official review for Crystal Palace 2, Chelsea 3. And now we can all relax because the last 10 minutes of that game was increasingly tense, especially when it got to the end with that header from Scott Dan and the last ditch tackle from Kurt Zuma. Which by the way, I want to really shout out Kurt Zuma before I even get started because uh, the way he's improved this team since he come back to the lineup, his threatening ability from set pieces both defensively and offensively. The return of those regular recovery tackles that, sorry, that he loves doing regularly. And I will say that I want to say the defense looks a lot calmer, but that game was not a good example of it. I want to say his performance as an individual has been a lot better than any of our defense, defenders has been since the restart by Andreas Christensen against Manchester City. But even in the case of Andreas Christensen, this guy has dropped in form since the City game. And I'm not trying to use that to drop any slander his way, but... We need to start seeing more consistency from him. And I think it's a defensive issue as well. We just need to start seeing consistency. That second goal, he, he lost his footing and he just struggled with, uh, what's his name, Benteke's strength and pressure on him. The same way he struggled under Danny Welbeck at the Watford game as well. But back on the positive note, we, we took it 1-0 up off the Willian cutback to Olivier Giroud, which there was a lot of complaints about because Willian didn't kick the ball out uh, because Gary Cahill had dropped down injured. And I get that as a huge reason for why we scored that goal. But you've got to look at it from a situational management point of view. If the ball's in the centre circle or something, and there isn't an instant opportunity to score a goal, I get it, kick the ball out. If it's a case where William is running through on goal in a counter-attack, no, who's kicking the ball out in that situation? Like, the game's a game at the point of the day. We are deep into a top four race. And when you are deep into a top four race, you've got to be making decisions like this a lot quicker. If William kicked the ball out and the game ended 2-2, we'd all be sitting there saying, why the hell did William kick the ball out and giving him hella slander and that? So, so the first thing I want to say is William did everything correct in that counter-attack. And William did everything correct in this game as well. He's had a brilliant return to form since, the, since we've come back from lockdown. And a lot of people are saying maybe we should give him a new contract and that. I'm not so eager on that but i'm still eager on the fact that the guy has had a lot of very good performances the guy does track back well going forward as well he's a brilliant ball carrier and he was nearly in for a goal as well off a brilliant counter-attack but what was it? i think in mccarthy came too close to him and the angle was too tight for him first goal though brilliant cutback from william to drew second goal was just excellent from christian pulisic you know with Christian Pulisic, everyone's scared about letting him cut inside, but this guy showed you exactly what you can do if you let him stay outside as well. Smashed it into the top left-hand corner of the net, the near post as well, and he hit that with such venom and accuracy. And Pulisic has been an absolute gunman since the turn of the lockdown. And I said for months before when our form was just dropping a little bit, that the reason for that is because we've lost Christian Pulisic. He's the only guy that offers something different and something that isn't as predictable as the rest of our other attackers. After that though, uh, what was it? it? Went to 2-1 and that was a brilliant Wilfred Zaha goal. And Crystal Palace started to increase pressure after that goal as well. Billy Gilmore was out of position for it, but he had chased down Van Arnholt to try and commit to him, but he'd released the ball to Zaha too quickly, which is why Zaha had the extra space to hit that shot, which was a great finish from him regardless. Um, after that, like I said, Crystal Palace just increased in pressure. Um, I feel like our midfield started to get a bit overran because we start, we just start, uh, what was it? Crystal Palace have a much stronger midfield than we do. And they started applying that a lot more towards the second half. And we were starting to struggle and lose the midfield bell. But Lampard's substitutions came in clutch yet again. Ruben Loftus-Cheek and Tammy Abraham come on. And as soon as they come on, guess who gets the goals? Ruben Loftus-Cheek linking up with Tammy Abraham. It looked like the Ruben Loftus-Cheek of old, just getting the ball and driving forwards at pace. And then the ball in between the two defenders into Tammy Abraham was excellent as well. But as soon as we started celebrating that, and if you watched it on the watch along, I was just sitting there so satisfied with the entire run of play and everything. As soon as we turned back to the replays, Crystal Palace had, eat, had pulled a goal back again off Christian Benteke. Uh, what was it? Christensen had lost his footing, I think, with Jordan Ayew. I'm not sure. It was one of the Palace attackers. It wasn't Zaha. I know that. And as soon as he lost his footing, Kurt Zuma had to commit to a two-on-one. As soon as he committed to the two-on-one, Benteke was found free. It's not really Kurt Zuma's fault. He just got put in a two-on-one position and he had to commit at that point. At that point, it was all about trying to settle the tempo of the game. And 
uh, Frank Lampard brought on the perfect player for that, Jorginho, and you saw the tempo start to set, set down. We start to control the game a little bit more. Palace started to apply pressure a bit more towards the end. We had Scott Dan's header off the crossbar, which came back off in between Max Meyer and Benteke, who could have smashed that in for the equaliser. And then as soon as we as soon as we tried to counterattack again, Tammy Abraham's lost the ball. Uh, Benteke is coming forward again, and Kurt Zuma comes out of nowhere with a beautiful recovery tackle. We managed to hold the hold the game off. It's 3-2 now. That puts us into third place with two points clear of Leicester City. Any result other than a win against Arsenal leaves us in third place, so we need Arsenal to try and turn up. And they've won us points before. I will say that they beat Wolves 2-0 as well earlier, so I can be a little bit confident about that, but let's just see if these guys turn up. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. It's Crystal Palace 2, Chelsea 3. We're third place for now, maybe for later. It depends on what the future holds for us. But let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Blues Fans TV. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my personal channel, Carefree Lewis G as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Connor Higgins' Twitch channel, Kit Nix. Yes, I finally got it right, <laughs> Kit Nix. Right, check his Twitch. I'll all be out in the description as well. We will see you guys very, very soon. Take care and up the chels.